If you're trying to improve your technique, especially if you're struggling to improve your technique, this could be the most important video you ever watch because I'm going to help you to improve all of your strokes. Now, I don't have five magical tips for your forehand, your backhand, your serve, your volleys, or anything like that because that's not how it works. The chances are you might already know what you're supposed to be doing. Potentially, you've watched a video online that's given you some cues to think about and you're trying to do that, and maybe you work with a coach and they've told you what to do, you just can't make it happen. So that's the part that I'm going to help you with how to actually implement changes within your game, how to think about things to really start to improve your technique so you can improve your game. I hope you find this video helpful. If you do, it'd be awesome if you give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe to my channel and get the notifications turned on. I help players to improve their game with coaching and technique and tactics and stuff like that. But one of the big things that I do is I help players to get their bodies able to do what they need to do on court. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my content. Okay, when it comes to improving your technique, the first thing that you gotta wrap your head around is the way that the brain works. We can only process so much information, we can only focus on so much at once. And making technical changes is hard. It requires effort, it requires focus. So we can't work on five or six different things all in one go. At the end of the video, I'm gonna show you some footage of me working on my forehand, some things that I'm trying to change, I'm trying to learn to play left-handed. There is a lot of stuff that's not working in the way that I want it to, but I can't think about the split step the unit turn, the first step, the way that I prepare, the racket drop, the racket lag, driving through my back leg, the contact point. I can't think about five, six, eight different things all in one go. It's simply too much. That's not the way our brains work. So you've got to focus on one or maybe two things at a time and you need to concentrate on working on those and achieve a certain number of repetitions until you've basically you've solved that problem and then you can start to work on something else. Now, because of that, you've really got to start to understand and figure out where your stroke is actually breaking down. What is it that's going wrong with your stroke because maybe we've got seven things that all happen in a sequence starting with the preparation and the stuff that I've just gone through maybe number six isn't working properly so the thing that we're you know we've identified that I'm not keeping my head still on contact which we know is really important you've got to keep your head on still on contact you've got to focus on that contact point because that allows your brain to control your wrist and it's going to increase the chances of your shot landing in so it is really important but and maybe the reason that you're not able to do that is because you got too close to the ball, you swung too late, and now you're hitting it from in here. And you can't keep your head still because you're basically hitting yourself in the face with the shoulder. So yes, we do need to improve that, but potentially the way that we get that working is by fixing, you know, step one, two, three, and four before we try and fix step six or seven. And this goes for lots of other different areas of the stroke as well. You know, I see a lot of different uh, coaching videos or people trying to correct the precise angle that they let go with the racket as they do their preparation, the exact position of the extension of the arm, of the racket drop, the exact way that they do the racket lag, or if we're thinking about the backhand, lots of different adjustments, you know, bringing the, the racket around the back to try and generate more power, when the problem might be that your timing is off. So if the timing is off, I don't have time to do all this stuff and meet the ball in the right place. If the timing's off on my back end, I probably won't have time to bring it around there and use the most optimal biomechanics for power generation. The issue is the timing, not the technical thing and the exact position of where my arms are. So really important that you understand that. You've got to figure out where the stroke is really breaking down. You know, if I'm always preparing late for the shot, the thing that I've really got to work on is finding a way to prepare early because if I'm always preparing late, it's going to make everything else more challenging. So you've got to figure out where your stroke is actually breaking down and that's the thing that you need to work on first. So potentially there's a lot of different stuff that you might need to work on, but you have to approach things in that order. Now, the next thing that's going to be really important is how you make the adjustments. So the first thing that I want to talk about that, uh, on that is the usage of video footage. Um, we are very visual learners. Our visual system is the most dominant system. The research is really clear. When you show someone video of themselves doing them, doing something, it enables them to make the biggest improvements. It just enables you to see what's going on. Yes, verbal cues can be useful. Feeling stuff is useful. But really, seeing stuff is how our brains learn things the fastest. So if you're practicing on your own, you're working on things, you definitely want to record yourself to help you make technical changes. And also, you can use it to 
identify where things are going wrong with your stroke as well. If you're working with a coach and the coach isn't using video with you, you need to ask them why because the research is really clear on this. If a coach wants to help you, they've got to show you video of yourself doing it because that is the thing that's really gonna allow you to see what's going on so you can make changes. So using video is really important. The way that you approach things mentally and the language that you use is also gonna be important. Our brains work in a certain way. It has to process things in a certain way. So say that we have identified that I want to keep my head still on contact. We know how important this is. And every time I do it, I'm lifting my head. Now, it's not because of some of the other problems that I've mentioned earlier. The problem is that I'm just not keeping my head still on contact. I'm lifting it. Everything else is working correctly. Now, the thing that you can't do is go, stop lifting your head, stop lifting your head, stop lifting your head. Because what I'm actually repeating over and over again is lift the head, lift the head, lift the head. So I need to find a positive way to say that. So instead of stop lifting the head, I wanna think about keeping my head still, keeping my head down, keeping my head touching my back shoulder as it comes through, watching the ball onto the strings. All those things would be acceptable. It's about you finding something that works for you uh, so that when you say it to yourself or if you're visualizing it with imagery, uh, that you can kind of get yourself to do what you need to do. And this also applies to coaching. I see this go wrong a lot of the time as well. You know, one of the most common things you hear coaches shout is, oh, you're hitting it late, you're hitting it late. And I was watching a really popular YouTube channel the other day where the coach was doing exactly that. This person is hitting the ball late and the coach is saying, late, late. The person knows they're hitting it late. It, keeping, by saying it late over and over again, it increases the likelihood that someone's gonna hit it late. You have to create a positive way to explain it. So it might be, meet the ball out in front take the ball early. If they don't work, maybe find something to do with a swing. Swing early, maybe think about the leg drive and you've got to think about the leg drive relative to the ball dropping. So maybe you tend to hit it late if you're dealing with high balls. So maybe you're, you've got to think about things in a different way. So I'm, in my head, I'm thinking, okay, start my leg drive before the ball bounces or something that you've explained to yourself in a positive way to give yourself something to work on. I want to work on driving with my back leg. I want to work on keeping my head still. I want to work on being further away from the ball as opposed to not being too close to the ball. Really key difference. Think about things in a positive sense. We also want to evaluate ourselves based on what we're working on. So if I am working on this, keeping my head still, and I'm using this over and over again because it's such an important thing and it's where it goes wrong for so many people. If I'm working on keeping my head still and I end up hitting a shot, the shot's an amazing shot. It flies in the corner, top spin power, everything's awesome, but I lifted my head. I don't want to mentally reward myself for that because I actually failed at the task that I was trying to achieve. The whole thing that I'm trying to do the thing that I've identified that I need to do to become a better player, to have better technique, is I need to keep my head still on the contact. So even though I hit a great shot, I failed at what I was trying to do. So I have to approach it and go, okay, right, focus on keeping your head still. Focus on keeping your head still. You know, maybe I don't hit a perfect shot, but I keep my head still. In terms of the learning outcome, in terms of improving your technique, that's actually better. So you've really got to focus on whatever it is that you're trying to work on. So if that's the early preparation, if it is the way that you're taking the racket back, you know, that's the thing that you've got to concentrate on. So maybe I don't take the racket back in the way that I'm trying to, and then I hit a good shot. Same thing applies, I failed at the task in hand. I need to concentrate on taking the racket back in the right way because that is what you've identified as the thing that's gonna help you to improve and develop your stroke. So, those are the things that really matter in terms of learning. You can only focus on one or two things at once. You need to figure out where your stroke is really breaking down. Start with addressing that first. You need to watch video of yourself to help you identify where things are breaking down and to help you make the actual changes. You need to find ways to explain it to yourself while you're on court. And then you need to evaluate yourself based on the thing that you're trying to improve, not the outcome of the shot. Now, like I said, this is gonna take energy. It's gonna take effort. It's gonna take repetition. Generally, 
if you're feeding from a, a ball machine or you've got a coach feeding you, it's going to be a little bit easier because there's less stuff to think about. When you move more into point play and match play, it becomes much harder to think about this stuff. So you often have to achieve a certain number of repetitions uh, in order to make it happen. And that's just the way it is. You've got to go through the process, but you do need to get the first things first and then kind of go through things in order. Now, something that kind of goes along with all this is that Often, technical issues are actually compensations for stuff that your body can't do. So if you think about some of the key things that I've talked about, you've got to prepare on time. And if you're trying everything, you've tried stuff with your coach, you've tried different drills, you've tried telling yourself what to do, and you still wait until the ball's on top of you to prepare, potentially it's just because your visual system doesn't work well enough to enable you to prepare on time. Same thing if you always get too close to the ball, despite practicing everything you can to try and be further away from the ball, it might be an issue with your body. Same thing for starting your swing late. You know, it's hard. You've got to deal with lots of different types of balls, different types of spins, different heights, different trajectories. It's hard to start the swing at the right time. That's why, you know, the people that you see on TV, they're amazing. Their time is amazing. Your system might not work in, it might not work well enough to allow that to happen. Same thing for the technical adjustments. If you've worked on multiple different ways to try and keep this racket face closed on contact for your top spin forehand, you've got your head still, all that stuff is working. You've tried changing the way that you take your racket back. You've tried all these technical adjustments and you can't make it happen. You still can't control the wrist. You might need to work on your coordination. This is just the way it is. Tennis is a hard sport. To play tennis at a high level, your body needs to work at a high level. And that's really one of the big things that I help tennis players with. I use brain-based training to help people improve things like their visual processing so they can have better timing and better technique and stuff like that. If that's something you would like help with, you really want to improve your game, then there's a link down below that's going to allow you to schedule a free chat with me. Uh, I'd love to learn about your game and see if there's a way that I might be able to help you. So that option is available to you down in the description. Now, the way I want to close out this video is showing you a couple of my forehands. I'm relearning to play left-handed, injured my right shoulder, so now I'm going through the process of learning again. Um, and there's lots of things that are going wrong with my forehand. In the videos that I'm going to show you, I'm working on trying to get a down the light forehand just so I've got some way to try and win a point more easily. Um, and there's a lot going wrong, so I'm going to show you the video, show you the sort of things that I've identified and then what I was doing and thinking about to try and correct the problem. So this is why video is so useful. In my head, before I saw this video, I thought I was the reincarnation of Djokovic, Nadal and Federer all rolled into one and I was hitting amazing shots. And then the video presented me with the reality. I was really arming the ball. There's a lot of things that I might want to improve with this stroke. Um, I'm okay with the split step, I'm okay with the preparation, but I'm really arming the ball and my goal is to get more racket head speed, so where that starts is going to be with the leg drive. I just wasn't using my legs enough. Now maybe we can make an argument that I'm a little bit close, maybe we can make an argument that I could take my elbow further away from my body on the preparation, but you know, the key thing here that I've identified here is I'm just not using my legs enough. So in the next video, I'm going to really focus on driving through that back leg. So in this video, I'm thinking about driving through the back leg. And I actually use two different cues. The first one I try is drive with the back leg. So I'm saying drive, drive, drive repeatedly to myself to encourage myself to do it. And as you can see, when I do it, I'm definitely using that back leg more. And the result is a significantly better shot. It felt like way less effort. I was getting a lot more speed a lot more power, and I was actually more consistent as well. The second thing that I tried was to think about ripping my belt buckle to the right. So I was imagining that I was wearing a belt and I was trying to rip the belt, belt buckle to the right. This is different to the first cue. In the first cue, I was thinking about my body, so it was an internal cue. In the second cue, it was an external cue because I was imagining something outside my body. So a small difference, they both worked uh, fairly well for me. The result, like I said, I was just, it was much more effortless, I was getting a lot more power, a lot more spin, and it was more consistent. So it was you know, a, a good coaching point for me. Because I wanted to try and progress things, I also tried to make an additional change, so we'll look at that now. The next thing that I wanted to try and do to get more power, more spin, was to uh, use my wrist a little bit more. So I was still trying to drive through my leg. That comes first, so I thought I'd be able to get away with thinking about two things at a time, but it really didn't work for me. I lost power, I lost spin, 
and I was way less accurate with my shots. Now, I've already said that, you know, we're trying to focus on what we're doing rather than the outcome, but everything that I was trying to do wasn't working for me. So in my mind, it was just a step too far. I need to stick with what I was doing previously and focus on just using my leg and driving with my leg and cement that, achieve a certain number of repetitions and until it becomes more habitual and then worry about improving the next thing. Okay. I hope you enjoyed that video. I cannot stress enough how important this stuff is. I've been around tennis a long time. I have seen a lot of players fail to make improvements. They're watching videos online. They're taking coaching, in-person coaching, spending a lot of money and still not improving. So that's why I wanted to make this video for you. Also, like I said a moment ago, some of the time it's just because your body isn't able to work well enough. I know for the longest time I struggled with timing and getting too close to the ball and hitting the ball late and the reason for that was my visual system was not working well enough. I spent 15 to 20 years not being able to improve. I addressed those problems and improved very quickly in a matter of months and that's why I help players in this area rather than focusing on coaching players. So if you would like help with that uh, there's a link down in the description like I said. Let's chat. It's a free call and we'll see if there's potential for us to work together. Okay, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give me that thumbs up. Uh, any questions, comments, leave them down below and I will try and get back to you as quick as I can.